Welcome to the Shrikecast, where IT training is free for everyone. My name is Andrew Krauthemmel, and today we're going to talk about Wireshark and remote packet capture. Uh, so more specifically, we're going to talk about PCAP, WinPCAP, LibPCAP, and how to access packets remotely from a device without installing uh, Wireshark or some other software besides the libraries uh, and capturing it to a different device across the network. So so something you can do that a lot of people don't know about uh, is this feature of remote capture. So it's not necessarily the most advisable method of doing it. Usually you want to do a local capture uh, on a device or put a sniffer into a network uh, somewhere along your infrastructure, uh, capturing locally and then retransmitting it out the network card to a different computer isn't really you know the best way of doing it but if you're in a bind uh, and you know the computer that you're needing to capture on has a really small hard drive and you want to run the capture for a couple of days or something like that you, you might have to do this uh, and you know it's, this is like a poor man's uh, like a poor man's shark uh, appliance or, or some other uh, packet capture appliance so what you'll do is install Wireshark uh, on some sort of large storage computer or, or server, file server, something like that, whatever it is you want to do. And then we're going to install WinPCAP uh, or LibPCAP on the computers that you um, want to capture from. So I'm going to be focusing on Windows in this video, so we're going to talk about WinPCAP. Uh, and you actually have to only install WinPCAP on the computers that you want to capture from. You don't need Wireshark in the whole package just WinPCAP. Uh, and then that, that comes with a service that we end up configuring and starting and then we'll go into Wireshark and point it to uh, the IP of the computer that we're trying to capture from and the credentials we end up adding. So the first thing you're going to need is WinPCAP. Go to WinPCAP.org and go download and install WinPCAP. It's pretty easy install. It's, obvious. it's one of the standard download next next finish type deals. Uh, right now, the latest version is 4.1.2 as of November 5th, 2012. Uh, so go grab that and install it. We're not going to go through the whole install here, but uh, that's where you go and get it. And uh, after that is installed, we're going to go and open up Actually, we're going to go right click on your computer and go to manage we're going to go this way because it's more universal uh, you can do control user passwords too as you might have saw there in the, the start the little run dialog but um, if you go this way it works on both domain and non-domain computers so I'm on my local computer here uh, I went to right clicked on my computer manage go to local users and groups we're going to go to users and we're going to make a PCAP user. So the local user we're going to give administrator privileges to, to the local PC here. And then enter those credentials in the other computer uh, that we're going to uh, capture to, whatever has Wireshark installed on, uh, so that it can talk to this uh, instance of this service that it gets installed from WinPCAP. So we're going to name it something simple, PCAP and we can name it whatever you want for your password it's going to be a temporary administrator account we're creating so it's up to you how crazy you want your password um, I would suggest deleting this account after you're done using it uh, and as you can see I'm making some selections here at the bottom we don't want this is going to be a service account so we don't want the password to change and we don't want it to expire for the whatever time frame it is that we're going to run this for. So there we go, we created our PCAP user. There he is. We're going to open him up and we're going to add them to the administrators group. There we go. On the local PC. So again, if you're on a domain computer, this is uh, the way to go about it for making the local account. If you're on any standard normal PC, you can do it this way. Um, this is the way I suggest just to that way this account doesn't have its password expire if you go through the other method it's under whatever local policies you have set up for your users 
So there we go, we made our account. Now we're going to go to start run services.msc. Going to bring up our service list in Windows here. And we'll expand these two columns a little bit. Scroll on down to remote. Look for remote packet capture protocol. It says it's V0, experimental, and all this stuff. Make it sound scary. This has been out for a while now. I've had no problems with it. Don't worry about it saying it's experimental in version 0. Uh, it, it, it's pretty nice. Going to open that up. Go to log on. And we're going to change the service to use the PCAP account that we just created. Go ahead and click OK. It should say log on service is right. OK, good. And then we're just going to start the service. Once the service starts, just refresh a little bit, make sure it didn't crash on us and die. So now it's up and running and, and looking good. So this is what you would do on whatever computers, computer or computers uh, that you want to capture from. These are your the ones that are going bad and, and you need to sniff some packets. So now that's up and running. So I have this running on another computer here, so we can connect to it and, and see some real traffic. Um, but, and I just went through the install on this PC that actually has Wireshark installed, so that at least you can see how it's set up. So now we're going to open up Wireshark, and I'm pretending I'm on the computer that's the capture point. It's got Wireshark installed. I'm going to capture you know five days worth of traffic from this other computer. And I have a big hard drive here, so I'm going to capture it all. So we're going to open up Wireshark. Uh, latest version right now is 1.8.3 as of today. So make sure you go out and get the latest version. The interface windows and stuff have changed around since 1.6 and before. So if you're following along with an old version, you're not going to have uh, the same windows that I do. So please go do that. You have a lot nice, a lot uh, of nice new features. There's Win PCAP, or PCAP NG format multiple interface capturing it's it's really neat go get go get the 1.8 series going to go to our interfaces options and then we're going to go to manage interfaces and then remote interfaces kind of a roundabout way to get there but go ahead and click add and it's going to ask for the host and port of the PC that we're trying to capture from so this is the PC, I, uh, the laptop here, I have set up. It's going to be 192, 168, 77, 153. Your port is always 2002 unless you go ahead and change it for some reason. Uh, a lot of times this shows up as empty and you might not know what port it is. So for your purposes, right down that it's port 2002. And then we're going to use password authentication, not null. Password authentication and we're going to enter in the uh, account and credentials that we just created. That was the local that local admin account. So we're going to use PCAP and then his password. Once you go ahead and click OK, you should see some interfaces pop up. These are the interfaces that are found on that remote system. If you have a problem and it can't connect at this point, it will fail. You won't even see this. If you see this right now and you get interfaces showing up, then you're connected and things should be good from here on out. If you don't, Go turn off the firewall on the computer that you're trying to capture from. You can't have the firewall on. It's not going to work unless you open up the, the port on the firewall. Uh, those of you in a domain environment, you might have the firewall turned off already. Um, or if you're on a local, normal home PC or something, probably the firewall is on by default. Go and turn it off for now for this purpose or open up the port slash application. Uh, it's how, up to you how you want to do it. But that's going to end up being a problem. So once we see these interfaces, that's good. We're going to apply and close, and then if we scroll down in our interface list here, now not only do we have our local interfaces, but we have some remote ones. And then I'm going to select the appropriate remote interface. Um, on this other laptop here, I've got like a local Ethernet connection and then uh, some other interface, I forget what that one is, uh, and then my wireless interface here, which is this guy. So we're going to check off the interface that I want to select on this remote system. Um, if you're using the 1.8, make sure PCAPNG is selected. Nice format, allows you to do some uh, neat things with multiple interfaces and 
uh, commenting inside of uh, inside of the, the capture files. It's really neat. Uh, and then you can obviously change your options here as to whether or not you want to do this. If you're going to be capturing for a long period of time uh, and you don't want to waste resources on the frivolous things like having the pack the page refresh constantly with the new packets, you can just turn this off. Your capture will still work, you just won't see anything on the screen. So if you're going to use this as your capture point for like five days and you're capturing off a database server that's being accessed by thousands of people, you probably don't want these top two options on because it's going to waste resources on your Wireshark box. So turn those off. For our example here, I'm going to leave them on though. We're going to go ahead and click Start. And there we go. We're capturing packets from this laptop that I have running with uh, the remote packet capture service running. And uh, we're remotely retrieving all his information. And that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. I try to get back to everybody. And uh, stay tuned for more videos on uh, other interesting IT topics. Thank you for viewing, and uh, we'll see you next time.